Welcome to a new video. So last week I did a live stream where we created a tiny little spaceship using the GDXR VR10 play. It's a, it a little bit of fun and one of the things that got brought up was gameplay tags. How you can use gameplay tags in your project and what they do. So I'm going to show you an example of how I use gameplay tags during the live stream where we built this little little spaceship that we're in. So if I show the actual screen. I've got a I've got a slider, doesn't do anything. I've got a throttle, which we can use to move around. But I've got these little switches on the top. And the idea was that we could have these so when we flick all four of them on, then it starts our engine and then we can kind of kick into gear and we can move around. So when we flick each switch, once all four are done, then we can actually move. If I take it, we'll wait for this to restart. Or it should do. There we go. What we can do is if we flick one, nothing's going to happen. Or oh, it's because I restarted. Bad example. Let's restart that. So if I flick one, then nothing's going to happen. And then two, nothing will happen until we finish the sequence. And then once we've done the entire sequence, then we'll actually move. And we can control the little spaceship to move around. So what I want to do is I'm going to boot up a new version of the GDXR template. So I'll just move this over to my other screen. And then in here, we're going to set it up the same way. The reason I'm doing it in here is because we have some pre-existing actors we can use. If you're doing a non-VR project, it's just going to be the exact same. The logic is the same. We're just using stuff that we have as on-off switches. And in this case, I'm going to use that little flick switch again because it's easier to do. So what we want to do is we want to open it up, Blueprints folder, and then find pretty much our button actually. So we just browse to the button. We can open up this blueprint and then we can see how it's all set up. So the bottom row is our on state and then the, the top row is our off state. We'll be using this. The template itself has a game instance already set up, which we will use to store our container of actor tags. And then we'll go through and we'll set that in. What I want to point out first though, is that if you go to the Epic Games documentation for use gameplay tags, there's a whole bunch more of information there. However, what I want to point out is this top section here, which says gameplay tags are user-defined strings that functions as conceptual hierarchical labels. You can add, apply gameplay tags to objects in your project and evaluate them to drive your gameplay implementation, similar to checking for booleans or flags. The booleans or flags is the key thing to, to wrap your head around with this concept. A tag is essentially a boolean that is on off but can be accessed anywhere in your entire project since it's stored in your game's INI file. So what we can do is let's say we've opened up our blueprint, it's our flick switch, and we know that we're going to have this activate button one or button two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a section in here where we add a gameplay tag. So I'm going to right click and do add gameplay tag. And you can see here it asks for a container and then a tag. Right now, we don't have any tags. We'll create one of those, but we also don't have a container. When doing a container, it can be in, inside any actor. However, if you create the container in an actor that is persistent throughout your project, let's say the game instance, it means you can access that container from any blueprint in your project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the uh, game instance of this project. So we are game instance. We can open this up and then all we need to do is create a new variable. So let's call this gameplay container, if I spell it correctly. And then for the variable type, we can actually search for tag container. So gameplay tag container. And then if we select this, we don't actually need to make it public. I'm going to do it anyway. Why not? But you'll see here on the right that we get this gameplay tag container where we can actually add some tags in. We have some already from our input user settings. However, we want to manage our gameplay tags and add some in there. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new tag. And you can see here that we've got input user settings with a drop down failure reasons. And then inside of that, we've got in invalid mapping name. For this hierarchy to work, what you need to do is do something like interaction and then dot, so period key. So that will be the first section. And this could be Click switch and then we could do dot. This is going to be essentially our second section and then switch underscore one. And then when we hit enter, nothing's going to happen because you must specify a source file for gameplay tags. 
And you can see here that we have this source section drop down. We're just going to do default gameplay tags dot dot ini. And now when we do it, we can do enter and then we hit enter. And you can see here that we get that interactions, flick switch, switch all one. So what we could do is we could right click on flick switch and we do add sub tag. And you can see it automatically fills in the name section for us. So we can actually add to this and go down. So then we could do switch or two. And we'll see that we've got two switches. We're going to check to see if they are enabled or not. So now in the drop down, we've got this interaction section and then flick switch and then one and two. We're not going to change anything inside the game instance. This is going to literally be our container. It's just going to store what we already have set. So now in our blueprint flick switch, what we want to do is on begin play is pass to our game instance. Your might be named something else. But I imagine if you're at this point, you're already using a game instance. So we're going to get game instance, get game instance. And we're just going to create a reference to it here. So this is in our blueprint. So promote to variable. And now we can access any variable from our game instance in here. And in this case, it would be our uh, container. So if I drag in as we are game instance, do get, and then we can actually do another get. And if we go down, we can see that we have get gameplay tag container, and we can plug that into our add gameplay tag. So when we flip the switch, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say add gameplay tag, and then we're gonna go through and then plug it in. If I do the interaction, so we say, yes, we're gonna be in the, it's gonna be an interaction. This is the flick switch, and this is gonna be switch all one. Then this blueprint, no matter how many times we use it, is only gonna register as flick switch one. So what we could do is we can right click and promote to a variable for that tag and we can leave it as it is. So you can see here in the bottom left, we've got tag, make this public. And then before we leave, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this section here. Actually, we'll just take the game instance and we're going to remove gameplay tag and plug this into the top. So when the, when the switch is turned off, we remove the gameplay tag, which is the one we have selected. And when it's on, we add it. So we're basically just adding, we're saying this, this flick switch is being turned on, add the tag, it's being turned off, remove the tag. So now if we compile and save, what we can do is we can actually duplicate this switch. And you can see on the right here that we have that gameplay tag dropdown. We can duplicate it over. So the one on the right now actually does the dropdown and we say switch or two. You can see that we can only have one switch on at a time. And I'll show you how to do more than that in a minute. But for now, that is literally switch on, switch one as that label, and then switch two. It's similar to a tag or a Boolean. We just don't have to cast or blueprint interface to another actor to get that sent through to it. Any blueprint that reads the game instance can listen for this tag. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our light bulb here on the left to only turn on when we have both switches enabled. So each switch has their, their own custom tag. So tag one and then tag two. And you can see here, I have a reference. So I've got a blueprint in the face. That says when these lights flick, flick on, they tell the blueprint to activate. So now we need to say inside of this blueprint, we're gonna do that check for those tags. So if I browse to actor and then we open this up, it's pretty simple. We've just got state if it's on, then set visibility to true, if it's not, we turn the light off, set it to false. Uh, what we can do is in here, we can do event. Actually, we'll just copy it from our flick switch. We can cast to our game instance. So the same section of code here. We're gonna take this and then just pop it in the top. Right click this node and then create a variable. So we have a reference to it. And then if we drag this in, we can do the same thing as get the container. So get gameplay tag container. And then we can actually search for has all tags. You can do has tag. So it has tag. This would be really handy if you've only got one tag you want to listen to for your, your code. So this could be something like a, so this could be used for something like quest system. So if you, if player has key item, then they would have a tag in here for that key item. And then if it's turned on when this line of code is fired, we listen to only that one specific actor. Or you could do uh, have all tags and then has any tag, has any tags. So has all tags and has any tags look similar, but it checks the any tag checks for a specific tag container. Tag container has any of the tags in the other container. 
So it'll just look through anywhere to see what's got it. We're not going to look at has any tag, and we're not going to use has tag, because that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just looking for one tag. What I want to do is I want to show you has all tags, because I think this is where the system can shine. And what we can do for this is we can create another container. So we can promote to variable. So we can promote this to a variable. You see that it creates a new gameplay tag container for us. Tags to require. And if we hit this enable and then we turn this on. So we make it public so we can actually see it. You can see now that we actually have a container and we can see those same tags. So when we go through, we we'll do branch, we'll say, okay, if this blueprint has these tags or if these tags are existing inside of our game instance, then we can go through and we can turn our light on. So say true. So my light switch fires, it hits this branch. The second one fires, it's gonna go through, check this each time. And then if it is on, or if it has those tags, then we can turn on. So what I could do is I could do the drop down, just make sure you can see it behind my head. Say switch one and two. We can enable both of those. So now if I was to jump into the project, make sure you guys can still see it. We can then go through and when I click the switch, nothing actually happens until I click the next switch and that I should have turned on. So I broke something, but okay. So one thing I realized is my logic for my flick switch was a little bit wrong. I put the gameplay tags after my event dispatches, not event dispatches, sorry, my, my blueprint interfaces. So I had to move those so they would fire afterwards. So we add and remove the gameplay tags before telling the light switch to look for them. Otherwise it was turning them on or off, but it was only getting that afterwards. So that was just a little flow error that I had going on. But if I, if I bring this in, and then we go up to our light switches, what I can do is I can go in here, we can then go over to it. Now if I turn one of them on, nothing's gonna happen, but then if I turn two of them on, then they both work. And if I turn one of them off, it's gonna stop. So you can see how we can actually do a lot of easy stuff with this. And then we can use that to control a whole bunch of different things. I'm doing it quite simple with some light switches and a light bulb. But if you think about this as doing it so the player has specific loot, if the player's picked up a key card, then they have that on them, they could actually go through. So I could replace this here. So in reality, the way this is set up, we actually have a tag. So we got an actor tag. I could actually remove this example and replace it with a, a gameplay tag instead. And then each card could have its own one. So we could do that actually. So key cards, we'll just go through and explain how to set that up. So browse past that in here. So you can see here that we've got the tag. It's just all the logic that's in there. It's just gonna tell Blueprint to start. What we could do is a grab component. So first hand grabbed, we could get the gameplay or the game instance, flick switch, game instance, key card, look this down here like so. And then we could do get, get gameplay tag container. And then we could add gameplay tag. And in this case, we've only got one key card. So we're just gonna use the add gameplay tag. So this is the tag we want to add, make that public, plug this into here. So when we grab this key card, we're going to add the gameplay tag. Then we can go to the, the tag manager. We can add a new tag. So interactions, we could say, let's do gameplay tags, interactions, add a new one. So interaction, key cards, all one, fix that. So restart required to apply because I, I changed the name and I kind of messed that up. So we'll do that in a minute. But you can say I've got key card underscore all one. What we can do is in the scene, we can now enable that to be key card one. So key cards, key card, or one. And now in the key card reader, what I could do is do on begin overlap. You can see here we check to see if the actor has a tag. We could remove this and then we could do the cast to the game instance. So a lot of going to the game instance because that's where we're storing it. However, the benefit of this is the game instance always exists, so casting to it isn't really a problem. And it also means that if it's inside the game instance, we can save this container and then we can load that back in when we need to. So we're going to paste this in, create variable, compile, and then we just do the same thing, get, and then gameplay tag container, tag. In this case, the tag is going to be our key card. So just because we might have more than one of these 
we can just do the tag that we're looking for. Plug this into a branch. So we say, okay, when the card is overlapping, we want to check to see if it is a tag, and then we can go from there. So the key card as well, what we'd probably want to do is say on dropped. So first hand dropped just behind my head, which could create a new dispatcher. We could take this logic, and then we say when we drop the key card, we remove that gameplay tag. So tag, container, instance, like so. The key card is probably not the best way to do this because it's just going to exist on the card anyway. And the player, we don't have to remove or remove, add or remove that tag. But I want to show you that if you're doing it with unique items such as keys, different collectibles, you can use the tags as a way to have information go through it. So now if we jump in, rather than using the actor tag on the key card, it will actually use the, the gameplay tag. If we can see, I don't know why my people, there we go. Okay, there we go. So if we go in, we've got the exact same logic and then when we plug it in, doo -doo -doo. so this is gonna be because, yeah, I didn't set the tag, key card one, and then in here, I didn't set the key card reader to be looking for a specific tag. So I need to set that to visible and then the tag is going to be key card. I need to make sure that this light is off default visibility. We're not using that. So hopefully, it's because I've rejigged the blueprints around. <laughs> I wasn't planning on modifying it this much. So need to go in, make sure you guys can see what I can see. And then at least when we go over to it, if the light doesn't turn on, it's just because of my blueprints are not set up for this. But you can see that the key card's added to it now, which means it's getting that gameplay tag and then going from there. So. You can use these gameplay tags as a way of communicating between different blueprints and easily setting it up to store that information. Because now in the game instance, we have a gameplay tag container. There's nothing stopping me from passing this straight through to our player or our save game and then saving all of these tags out. So you can see how having access to this information can make things a lot easier and just reduce the amount of code that you need so you're not sending variables through different blueprints. And as long as it's a string or some kind of Boolean operation, then you can actually use it how you want. And it can be pretty powerful. So rather than mumbling on, I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you want to see how I made the little spaceship thing at the beginning of the video, I'll put that into the, the little end cards and I'll link it in the description as well. So you can check out that live stream. And if you want to follow for more, let me know. And if you like this sort of stuff, please leave a comment and share it around. I don't ask that enough. And maybe possibly drop by the Discord where I can answer any questions that you might have. Cool. All right, until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then.